I've been a fan of the Guardian Legend for a very long time. I can recall seeing a TV commercial for it in the late 80s, a commercial I've yet to experience again after 30 years. I remember going to school and someone asking me, hey, do you think the Guardian Legend is Zelda 3? I replied, what? It doesn't even look like the Legend of Zelda. The next time I saw the commercial, I tried to give him the benefit of the doubt, but I couldn't see it beyond the game's perspective and screen changes. It otherwise appeared to be a sci-fi game. I would eventually play it at a friend's house and obtain my own copy in the late 90s. But 30 years later, thanks to the internet, I finally found out why my classmate thought it might be Zelda 3. He saw a different commercial than I did. The action was blazing in Zelda. The adventure was a blast with Link. Now experience Gertie's... Experience Battle of Olympus! Battle of Olympus is the most... Wait, what just happened? The commercial started off showing the first two Zelda games, mentioned the Guardian Legend, then threw a curveball to talk about Battle of Olympus, a game that resembles Zelda 2. Two games distributed by Broderbund that basically bait and switch Zelda 1 and 2 for footage of the one that most resembles the most recent Zelda game at the time, and then ending with the giant Nintendo logo. No wonder my classmate was confused. Battle of Olympus is a fun game, but let's focus on the game that backdoored its way into this commercial, The Guardian Legend. So what is it? A multi-genre game that combines a traditional vertical shooter with an isometric adventure. Straight out of the concept state, electing to create a fun multi-genre game is quite an undertaking as the eventual release begs the question, well, which of the two genres ended up being better? When I first played The Guardian Legend, that question was irrelevant, because the game was fun. What I didn't know at the time was that it was developed by Compile, a Japanese company whose bread and butter was the vertical shooter. While this genre is arguably better of the two, the adventure aspect is very well made. Released in an era that was absolutely dominated by the side-scrolling platformer, The Guardian Legend took two genres and managed to synergize them in a distinctive game that was a welcome addition to the NES library. Hmm, did I say two genres? I meant three. Perhaps one extra genre component that is present and underrated is the one that ties the game together, the RPG. This subtle genre also exists in the Legend of Zelda series and helps provide a feeling of character growth and steer game progression. Specifically, I'm referring to the power-ups to raise your maximum energy, chips, attack power, defense, and shot power. The player character trait development helps control how far you can progress in a dungeon stage where you are a fighter. Adventure. Power up your character. Go to corridor. Complete dungeon stage. Fight boss. Obtain a key or a power up. Repeat. Items you find in adventure mode will help you fight in the dungeon and vice versa. Of course, you could explore every possible nook and cranny in adventure mode until forced to enter a corridor to obtain a key and progress further. But electing to beat the difficulty curve and become overpowered, that's a common road traveled when playing an RPG. Tasking a player with adventuring and backtracking through numerous screens that look similar to each other could be a recipe for entertainment disaster unless that player has a really good memory or makes a map by hand. Fortunately, the subscreen contains a square-based map that also displays your current location. The game also provides coordinates. Couldn't defeat a mini-boss in the labyrinth? Write the coordinates down and come back later. Even if you ignore the coordinates, the map with your current position is an easy way to get your bearings. Without it, the navigation of the labyrinth may cause you to get turned around so frequently that you give up the game in frustration. It may come as no surprise that this is one of my favorite games on the NES. Unless you started really digging back in the day, you were probably unaware that the game was developed by Compile. Upon learning this some years ago, I started picking up more of their games, including the Famicom release of The Guardian Legend, which appears behind me in several of the videos you'll find here. If you've never played it, give it a try and become the legend. <laughs>